Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to New Zor Education. Um, let's uh, solve a couple of problems related to research of functions behavior. We will use only algebraic uh, apparatus without the calculus. And uh, our purpose right now is to basically investigate function is increasing or decreasing and where, etc. Now, this uh, uh, lecture is part of the course Math Plus and Problems presented on unisor.com. On the site, it's presented together with notes for each, each lecture on the site, and there are hundreds of them. Each lecture has detailed notes. It's like a textbook, basically. So you have um, the lecture itself, you have video presentation, and you have a textual presentation of the same material. Uh, so it's, I think it's easier kind of to understand. Uh, the site is totally free, there are no advertisements, uh, sign-in is not necessary. I mean, you can do it, but that's basically not necessary unless you are uh, studying in a group with a teacher where you have to establish connections, etc. So, for individual uh, studies, you don't really have to even sign in. And, uh, okay, and let's just uh, solve a couple of problems. Now, the problems, as usually in math, are totally artificial. And the purpose is to basically teach you how to think outside of the box. So, the problem number one is to investigate the behavior of the function f of x is equal to x divided by 1 plus x squared. And basically I would like to find out where it's growing, where it's decreasing, increasing, etc. Well, let's just concentrate uh, from the kind of Descript, de, de description of this function, how, how basically it works. Well, um, the graph would probably be very helpful. Let's try to, um, to draw this graph. Now, uh, I will just divide one graph over another. So this is my one, uh, y is equal to x, right? Now, this is my parabola, which is lifted by one, and I have to divide one by another. Well, let's start from zero. At zero, it will be zero, right? Now, then it will be positive, so it should go up from zero. Otherwise, it cannot be positive. Now, in infinity, x squared goes, or one plus x squared, goes significantly faster than this is one plus x squared. Significantly faster than one is equal to x, right? So, in infinity, it should go to asymptotically to zero. So, it goes up and then uh, will gradually go down to zero. Next is function is odd, which means you, if, you, if you will change the sign of the x, it will change the sign of the function. Odd functions are symmetrical relatively to rotation around the origin of er, uh, coordinates, which means it would be something like this. So it looks like this is where function is decreasing, this is where function is increasing and that's decreasing. So what you have to prove now that this is minus 1 and this is 1, given points to you, that from minus infinity to minus 1 function decreasing, then from minus 1 to 1 increasing, and then decreasing again. That's needed to be proven, that's the problem. Okay, so let's start from a very simple thing. How to prove that the function is increasing? We will take two values, x1 and x2, with x2 greater than x1. Doesn't matter, positive, negative, doesn't matter. And if x f of x1 is less than f of x2, if for any x and x1 and x2 satisfying this, then the function satisfies this inequality, then the function is increasing for any pair of x1, x2. Right? That's what means increasing. Okay, now, we have not just any, we have certain three intervals. So let's assume first one, that this is from minus infinity to minus one. And prove this. Well, actually, we have to prove the other way around. We have to prove this. Function is decreasing here, right? Okay, so we have to prove that x1 divided by one plus x1 squared should be greater than x2 divided by 1 plus x2 squared. We have to prove this inequality. If x1 and x2 satisfy these inequalities, all right? 
Okay, now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do analysis, which means from this, I will go to uh, equivalent uh, transformation. And uh, if I will uh, come to something which is obvious, then I can say, okay, since all transformations were equivalent, from that obvious thing, we can always go to uh, original. And that's the proof. So we have analysis and the proof. If you will just finish on the obvious and will not say that uh, you have all the transformation tra uh, 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 reversible and that's why from obvious statement you will get that, unless you say it, that's not the end of the proof. End of the proof is to state this particular fact. Because you know that from a true statement you can always find, using logical transformation, another true statement. From a false statement, you can find something else instead of t uh, uh, including the true statement. So if you go to one direction, if this is a false statement, in theory, you can't come up with uh, the uh, obviously uh, true statement. So, okay, so let's prove this way. Analysis. Uh, first equivalent transformation, I want to get rid of the uh, denominator. So I will multiply by the product of these two denominators. So I will have x1 plus x1 x2 squared. Now, since the product of these two denominators is strictly positive, you see these are squares and plus 1, so it's positive, I do not change the sign of uh, inequality. Uh, x2 plus x2 times x1 squared. Or, let's transform uh, this way. We will take x2 to the right, so it will be x2 minus x1 to the right, so I will have less sign, right, since I changed the direction. And here I will have x1, x2 multiply by x2 minus x1, right? Uh, yes, x2 minus x1. Am I right? x1 goes this way, x2 goes this way. Uh, x2, x1 squared goes this way. x1, x2 goes outside of the parentheses. And in the parentheses I will have x2 minus x1. Now, x2 minus x1 is positive. x1 is less than x2, right? So I can uh, uh, divide both sides by the positive number. I will have less 1 less than x1, x2. Now, both x1, x2 are negative and by absolute value greater than 1, right? They're from, they're greater than, they're less than minus 1. So their product, obviously, each one would be by absolute value greater than um, than 1. Now both negative, so their product would be positive. So this is positive number with absolute value greater than 1. So that's basically a true inequality. Now I'm saying that all our transformations are reversible and that's why from here I can go to here by multiplying both sides by positive number. From here I have to go to, 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 to this way. And this, uh, and then I will divide by I will uh, divide by the product of 1 plus x1 square times 1 plus x2 square. Take this x1 outside of the parentheses, it will be 1 plus x2 square. If I divide by the product of these denominators, I will have left part and I will have right part. Okay? That's it. That's the end of the proof. Now, next interval. Next interval is this. from minus 1 to 1. And I have to prove the opposite inequality. I have to prove this. Now, from this I go to this, and that does not change the sign, because I'm multiplying by positive number. From this I go to this. I just regroup them 
move to the left to the right, which means I'm subtracting or, or adding something to um, both sides of the inequality that doesn't change the inequality. And uh, am I right here? Hold on a second. Wait a moment. Let me just hold it again. Uh, X2 is on the right. Uh -huh. well, I will reverse, I reverse the order so it should be greater than right. X2 minus X1 go goes to the greater part and this is to the lesser part. And now I divide by positive X2 minus X1, I will get that. Now, is it true? Well, obviously it is true because X1 and X2 are by absolute value great, uh, less, than, less than 1, so their product would be less than 1 by absolute value. Positive or negative doesn't really matter because obviously number one would be greater than this. Even if they are positive, it will be less. It, uh, they will be less than one. If, if they're negative, they will be definitely less than one. So that's the obvious uh, inequality. And now I'm saying the same thing as before from this. I can go backwards and I will come up with this. So if x and x1, x1 and x2 are satisfying these conditions, then function satisfies this condition, which means it's increasing. And the last one, I have to again go from 1 to positive infinity. And I have to prove that the function is Uh, decreasing, right? So it means this. I have to prove this, I have to prove this, I have to prove uh, I have to prove this, I have to prove x1 goes to the right, so that would be this sign and this sign. Now, is it true or false? Obviously, it is true since all my x1 and x2 are greater than 1, so their product would be definitely greater than 1. So this is obvious. Now this is true, and this is true, and this is true. So we go backwards. So analysis and the proof. If analysis is correct, the proof is very easy. <laughs> Just one statement to say, that's it. So that's it. That's the end of this problem. problem. Let's go to another one. Okay, another problem is kind of similar. Function is x plus 1 over x square. Well, again, let's start with the graph. That would be a little bit maybe more kind of difficult graph. So we have to add two functions. One function is this one. That's y is equal to x, right? Another function is 1 over x squared. Well, x squared is a parabola. 1 over means whenever it goes to infinity, 1 over would be, would, would be down to 0. And whenever parabola goes to 0, that would be to infinity. And it's odd function because it's f minus x will be exactly the same. So it's this way. So this is my 1 is equal to 1 over x squared. Now, how the sum of these functions would look like? Well, um, very easy. Now, closer to zero, this would be definitely overwhelming little x here. So functions should be actually near zero should be asymptotically going to the y-axis, closer and closer to the y-axis. Similar to 1 over x squared. This is a very small value. Now, as we go, let's say, to the right, we are diminishing the 1 over x square component and increasing y is equal to x. So it will be always greater than 1 over x by smaller and smaller piece. So it will be something that at some point it will be this, where um, the 1 over x square would be very small addition so it will be closer and closer to y is equal to x. So our curve would be like this. 
asymptotically going to the y-axis near zero and asymptotically closing to y is equal to x when we go to infinity. On the left, on the negative side, again, in the beginning, as I said, uh, near zero it will be closer. Now somewhere at this point, this is negative, this is positive, it should cross, and then go down again. So it should be something like this. Because we are adding to this y is equal x, so less and less and less. So this is my graph. So it's supposed to increase up to zero. Then from zero to some point, it should decrease and then increase again. Now, what's interesting is that this point is given to you. Cubical root of two. Very strange number, right? Okay, fine. So that's what it is. And what we have to prove is that from minus infinity to zero is increasing, from zero to cubic root of two is decreasing, and then after that it's increasing again. All right, so let's just prove it. Again, three cases. Okay, case number one. So as usual, we take x1 less than x2 less than zero, and we have to prove that one over x1 plus, oops, sorry, x1. x1 plus 1 over x1 square. We are talking about increasing functions, so that should be greater, uh, less than x2 plus 1 over x2 square. We have to prove that. Well, let's do exactly the same kind of approach, analysis, which means from here we will try to go to some obvious thing. Okay, so what is the obvious thing? Let's move everything to the right. Uh, so I will have x2 minus x1 plus 1 over x2 square minus 1 over x1 square. We have to prove this is greater than 0, right? I move everything to the right, that's why the sign was less here and greater here. Now, we will do the common denominator would be x1 square minus x2 square, which means that would be what? If this is product, I will have x1 square minus x2 square. Oh, yeah, right. And this is product, right. Well, which means, again, let me just change this to x minus 1, x, x1 minus x2, x1 plus x2. Okay? Okay. Um, okay, so what do we have here? Um, okay, now this is positive because of this. Now, this is negative. This is opposite, right? x1 is smaller than x2. Negative. x1 plus x2 is also negative because they are all negative. So, negative times negative gives me positive, and this is positive. So, it will be greater than zero because this is also positive. So, that's obvious inequality. And since I just got here by equivalent transformation, just regrouping and um, getting the common denominator, nothing basically was uh, dangerous for changing of the sign. Sign remains exactly the same. So that's the proof. So in this particular case, everything is fine. Okay, now let's do another case from zero. cubic root of 2. And I have to prove the opposite inequality. That this is greater. That means function is decreasing. And then that would be 
less than zero, right? Okay, now, um, let me just change slightly here. I will put x2 minus x1, and then I will put x2 minus x1 as well. I will change the sign. And I will put minus here. Instead of plus, I will put minus, because I have reversed this. I have to prove that this is less than zero, right? Now, x2 minus x1 is a positive number, so I can divide both sides of the inequality, and it do doesn't change the sign of inequality. So that would be 1 here, minus this. So basically, I have to prove that uh, whatever remains here um, would be less than, less than 1. Or, so it's 1 minus x1 plus x2 divided by x1 square, x2 square, should be less than 0. I have to prove that. Or, moving this to the right side, and multiplying by positive x1 squared x2 squared, I have to prove that x1 squared x2 squared would be on this, would be on that side, but then I multiply would be less than x1 plus x2. Okay. Now, let's think about it. What is Um, the maximum value of x1, x2 square. Well, the maximum value would be when both of them are at maximum, right? So that would be cubic root of 2 squared. Okay. Now, what is this? That's cubic root of 4. All right. Let me do it slightly more efficiently here. What I will do, it's uh, too many squares, so let's just multiply both sides of this equation by x1, x2, um, because they are positive, right? So it would be x1, x2 minus uh, x1 plus x2 divided by x1, x2. We have to prove this is less than 0, right? Or x1, x2 should be less than 1 over x2 plus 1 over x1, right? That would be better. So, let's think about what is the maximum value of this side, on the left side, when both of them are at maximum. So it would be square root of 3, uh, uh, cubic root of 2, sorry, uh, square. That's the maximum value of this. Now, what's the maximum value of this? The maximum value of this sum would be when the denominators... Uh, uh, sorry, what's the minimum value of this? Would be when the denominators would be at maximum, right? So whenever my x1 and x2 both equal to this, that would be the smallest value um, which, which is possible for this. So this is the highest value for the left part. And the smallest value for the right part would be 1 over square 
uh, sorry, cubic root of 2 plus 1 over cubic root of 2, which is, what is this sum? Uh, it's 2 to the power of minus one third. This is two to the power of minus one third plus another one, which means I have to multiply it by two, which is two to the power of minus one minus one two third, which is what? Which is square root. Uh, sorry, plus two thirds power of 1 minus 1 third, which means cubic root of 2 square, right? And that's exactly the same as this. That's the trick. That's why this such, such a strange number was given. Strange number was given because this is the maximum for this and minimum for this. And because this is a strong, strong less than, that would be strong here. So if the smallest number, this is always greater than this number, and this is always less than this number. So this is a boundary between these two sides, and that's why this inequality is correct. And that's why the original inequality is correct, because everything is reversible. Okay? So there was a little trick here. Whenever I was from this, I came to this. Now it's all positive, so I just multiply it by x1, x2. And this I divide, so it would be 1 over x2, 1 over x2, uh, x1. And now this is product, and this is sum of uh, inverted value. Compared maximum of this and minimum of this, and they are equal, which means this is always on the right and this is always on the left. So this is a true equal, e e inequality. Okay, and the third one greater than, so that would be increasing, right? So this would be s cubic root of 2 and plus infinity. I have to prove this. It's increasing function, right? Okay, let's go basically from here uh, okay, uh, can I save, save something? Well, let's try from the beginning. It would be good schooling for all of us, including myself. Okay, so first what we do is uh, x Two x two minus x one plus x over x two square minus one over x one square should be greater than zero, right? Now this I will get the common denominator. It would be x one square minus x two square, so that would be x. 1 minus x2, x1 plus x2. Then I change the sign to minus here, and I change the x2, x1. Then I uh, cancel x2 minus x1, and I got this, but now it's supposed to be greater. Okay, then I multiply by x1, x2. Uh, I have x1, x2 mm, greater than 1 over x1 plus 1 over x2. It's supposed to be this way. If my both are greater than. Okay, now the reverse. Uh, what is the maximum value of this when my denominators are at minimum, which means this is the minimum, right? 
So that would be again uh, 1 over cubic root of 2 uh, times 2, which is, um, let me do it differently, but I will get the same result. This is cubic root of 8 over 2, right? Instead of 2, I put cubic root of 8 which is cubic root of 4. And minimal value for this is when each of them is minimal, which is cubic root of 2 square, which is the same thing as cubic root of 4. So again, minimum of this is this number, and maximum of, of this is the same number. So this same number basically divides them. If this is at minimum and this is at at maximum, which means this is always greater than this one. And all uh, transformations are reversible. Now, uh, just as a sideline, I mean, how the whole thing can be done easier with calculus. So we wanted to do it using just algebraic methodology, but what if I do use the calculus? Well, that's really kind of very easy and fast. What's the first derivative? f of x. Derivative of x is 1. Derivative of x to the power of minus 2. That's minus 2 uh, 1x3, right? When is it equal to 0? Well, 1 equals 2 over x cube. x cube equals to 2. x is equal cubic root of 2. And here we got that. And, obviously, when x is greater than this number, it's positive, so it's growing, uh, because this is a bigger number, and uh, basically all the rest is the same thing. If, if, if x is negative, this is negative, minus would be positive, so it would be positive. So, if it's less than 0, it's always growing, and uh, when x is between 0 and uh, cubic root of 2, the whole thing would be negative, the function is decreasing. So this calculus is very easy, but again, the purpose was to don't use the tools which you have. I mean, if you have tools which is just algebra without calculus, then there is a way to do it as well. Not maybe as easy way as if you know the calculus. Well, obviously, the more sophisticated you are, the, easiest, the easier for you is to accomplish the job, right? So, it's good to study things. Um, Alright, so basically what I'm kind of encouraging you to do is um, just go back to the website unizor.com, choose Mass Plus and Problems. This is algebra number 10, where we kind of research the functions and uh, read again what the problems are and try to do it yourself. Go through all these calculations I did uh, just on a plain piece of paper. It's very helpful if you do that. All right, that's it. Thank you very much and good luck.